Talmac is not dead. The beast known as Talmac hungers for the tears of the living. It is not dead, but it feels as though it should be. Talmac identifies as trans-dead. It wears a mask carved from the front half of a human skull and carries a tall femur bone like a walking stick. It wears a long black cloak which encircles its entire body, obscuring every patch of sickly skin. It blathers terrifying nonsense under its breath and is often mistaken for the Grim Reaper as it strolls through the woods. But Talmac is not dead, and it does not bring death. It merely twists and torments and whispers awful truths, the kind that should stay buried. Natalie saw the beast and wandered close to it, entranced by its tall strangeness. The truth, it seemed, was too appealing to her. She wandered too close, and Talmac leaned close to her ear to quickly whisper an awful thing. That truth should not be repeated and will not be repeated here. Now Natalie lays in bed and stares at the ceiling, broken and listless. She no longer feels like the person she was. She cannot unknow the truth. So she tries to forget. She sits in the garden, walled off from the woods by a tall fence. She prunes her bushes and stares into the blue sky. But everything is tainted now. She still hears Talmac in her head, that strange voice. It speaks with complete certainty. The mind cannot argue with a voice so sure. Natalie goes to the kitchen and burns her hands on the stove. For a time, the agony drowns out the monster's words. Still, the clock above the mantel ticks. Still, the house is empty. Still, Natalie must return to the village to perform her menial labors. Or she will lose the empty house and the merciful protection it brings. To be seen by other people is unbearable. And still the monster waits outside the gate. Natalie sees it out of the corner of her eye from time to time. That thing. That trans-dead thing. She lives in constant fear that it will step over her garden wall and whisper to her again. <laughs>